What could be more idyllic than swinging in your floaty dress in lush gardens without a care in the world? But hang on, who's that creepy old man hiding in the bushes? Why is that dog barking? What's he looking at? Shh! Settle in and I'll tell you the tale of seduction in this sexually charged painting that defined an era. Welcome to Art Tales, where I share the surprising and scandalous stories of how and why artworks were made, one painting at a time. I'm Louise Emily, an artist working in the UK. To see the paintings and supporting images for this episode, head on over to louiseemily.com. Now, let's sink into the frivolity and indulgence of this Rococo era painting. This painting, titled The Swing, was considered one of the great enduring masterworks of the Rococo era. It was painted by Jean-Honoré Fragonard in 1767 as a private commission for the Baron de Saint-Julien, who wanted a titillating portrait to express the excitement playing out between himself and his mistress. But Fragonard was not the young nobleman's first choice. Another French artist, Gabriel Francois Doyen, had already declined to paint the scene, believing it was frivolous and sleazy and would harm his reputation as a serious painter. But Fragonard took it on, not least to resolve some cash flow issues he was facing at the time due to some patrons that were slow to pay out. This marked a pivotal moment in Fragonard's career, from historic mythological painter to cherished darling of Louis XV's pleasure-seeking court, who would come to adore his fresh, hedonistic style and loose, vigorous brushwork. I can't help but think that Doyen would be kicking himself now as this very painting has gone on to influence many later works, and most recently some Disney classics like Cinderella, Tangled, and it even popped up in Frozen. But, as we're about to discover, Disney had to make some significant adjustments to make it suitable for a younger audience, removing the symbolic eroticism within the artwork, which, I'll grant you, looks deceptively innocent at first glance. But when you look closer, the signs of a dangerous liaison are everywhere. Let's look at this delicious candy-coloured scene. It's an idyllic summer's day. We're in a lush, fertile, fantastical garden, celebrating the abundance of nature itself. In the 18th century, these gardens and <coughs> pleasure pavilions in the grounds of private country estates provided a playful retreat from the strict regulations of elite society. Their hidden areas and secret corners were perfect for couples wanting to sneak away unchaperoned and indulge freely in their heart's desires. Paintings of people swinging were very much in vogue as a symbol of frivolity and infidelity. We see the young coquettish leading lady on this swing is clearly the star of the show, fashionably dressed in an effervescent pink silk gown lined with lace, wearing a matching choker and hat. Sitting atop a gilded, luscious red velvet seat, effortlessly floating through the air, she's carefree, flirtatious, and has thrown caution to the wind by showing her ankle. All units respond. The layers of her skirt open like petals of the blooming pink roses on the bush below. It's like her fertility rivals that of the garden itself. In contrast to the gleeful woman, the man lying awkwardly in the bush, in a fancy suit that was clearly not made for this activity, is in fact the man who commissioned the painting, the Baron. He's looking up at the mistress, gazing into her... Oh, wait. Oh, OK, so that's why he's in the bush, to look up her skirt? Hmm. His wide-eyed gaze and extended left arm draws our attention to his mistress's white stockings and pink garter. Yeah, make no doubt, she's a rule breaker, and he likes it a lot. The heeled pink slipper that flies off of her pointed foot leads our eyes to a marble statue of Cupid on the far left, the mythological god of erotic love. Normally, Cupid is cheeky, whispering in people's ears, but this is menacing love Cupid based on a well-known statue by Etienne Maurice Falconet, made for Madame de Pompadour, King Louis XV's mistress. By invoking this work, Fragonard suggests illicit love at the most elite levels of French society. 
Menacing Cupid is casting a veil of secrecy, looking right at Madame as a confidant, with his finger raised his lips, advising her to stay silent about the man at her feet. Unlike the untamed desire on the left-hand side of the painting, the right-hand side of the garden is a much more constrained affair. The old man in the bushes is the woman's cuckolded husband, literally holding the reins on their marriage, perhaps trying to reel her back in? He seems blissfully unaware of her hidden lover. The chubby-winged figures, or putty statues, look concerned and the husband's faithful little yapping dog is trying to sound the alarm to his master and expose the whole sordid tale of infidelity. In fact, if we step back, we can see that the three figures create an inverted V-shape, suggestive of this scandalous love triangle. Whilst this painting is a static snapshot, there's an uncanny sense of movement. I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm on a swing myself with the back and forth between all of these hidden Easter eggs. It's the diagonal lines that give this sense of movement and energy when we follow the rope of the swing down through the female figure all the way to her panting lover who leans back onto his elbow and lifts up his left arm. And there we are again. He seems infatuated, totally blown away and driven wild by desire. I love you. The closer we look, the more we find a disconcerting juxtaposition of sugar-sweet images and tensions. Here we see the besotted man holding out his hat but not quite able to touch his lover. As an artist well versed in the classic religious paintings, Fragonard is likely reimagining the most famous tension filled gap of all, the one in the Sistine Chapel from Michelangelo's creation of Adam, where the small space in between the two fingers builds the anticipation of God completing his creation of Adam himself. But in this case, Fragonard uses the tried and tested technique to build a tingling tension of sexual desire between the lovers who are just out of reach of one another. On the flip side, the overgrown plants and abandoned rake in the foreground suggest that the will of nature, like that of love, can never be fully constrained. And then there's another foreboding symbol, the rope, which is frayed, expressing a sense of danger. Is the fallen woman coming? So, if it were this scandalous, why risk having it painted at all in the first place? Wouldn't it have been foolish for the Baron to put it on display at all? Well, these types of works were relatively small. The swing was only 81 by 64 centimetres, that's 32 by 25 inches, and intended for display in intimate rooms known as cabinet. In full privacy, the patron and his inner circle would have admired the painting's sexually charged themes and appreciated its subversion of social norms for the pursuit of personal pleasure. While works like The Swing would be criticised as symbols of the aristocracy's moral decay, they were mega popular during the 18th century thanks to their captivating visual games. So, what became of Fragonard? Well, after his death in 1806, for half a century, he was left out of the history books altogether, but was thankfully later re-identified as one of the all-time masters of French painting. With his beautiful grasp of colour and expressive, confident brushstrokes, he undoubtedly influenced the founding members of the Impressionists, most notably his grandniece, Berta, Morisot and Renoir. Fragonard's paintings are now synonymous with the Rococo era, Today, the swing hangs in the Wallace Collection in London, amongst other acclaimed Rococo works. I hope you've enjoyed swinging back and forth with me between the many rich, irresistible details sprinkled across this painted canvas. I know I have. If you enjoyed this video and would like me to make more, please show me that I'm not just talking to myself by liking this video and subscribing so you get an alert as soon as the next Art Tales is ready to view. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this painting and if there are any other paintings you'd like me to cover in future. Thanks for watching and in the meantime, stay curious!